Now this is what a live service Halo game is meant to be. Just looking at this image alone lets me know that this is going to be the biggest update ever in Halo Infinite. And 343 just released a ton of amazing detailed blogs, very lengthy as well, to go over everything coming in with Season 5. And in this video, I'm going to break it all down for you. So make sure you stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. Here's Season 5 in a nutshell. At release of Season 5, we'll have two arena maps, Forbidden and Prism, two new Forge canvases of Barrage and Permafrost, a new weapon variant of the Bandit Evil, which will go in more detail later, a new mode extraction with its own 24-7 playlist, the hero rank reward of Halo Infinite's Mark VI armor core, as in the Halo Infinite Master Chief, tons of new customization like Flood-inspired armor, as well as the Combat Evolved Mark V armor set, Battle Pass XP in custom games, cross-core helmets, as well as Forge AI toolkit, and a major update to one of Halo Infinite's most popular modes, Ranked Arena. So that's coming at launch of Season 5, but we also have stuff coming on later in the season, which are going to be massive for this game. The biggest one being Firefight King of the Hill. Firefight King of the Hill will have nine maps at the launch with three community-made maps. I mean, later in the season, we'll have the Repair Field, which is going to be very similar to Halo 4's Regen Field, but we'll get into that a little bit later, as well as our first experience of Operations. Also, 77% of you people who watch this channel are not subscribed so if you want to see update with everything going on with halo and gaming you know what to do then. Let's get into the details of this update. First, let's start off with the new mode, Extraction. Now, this mode is back in Halo 4, so maybe not everyone here has played it, so we're all on the same page. It's effectively, it plays like King of the Hill, where a neutral extraction site appears on the map and players have to go to that place and plant the device. Where in King of the Hill, you need to stay on top of that hill for it to count. In Extraction, you don't have to do that. Enemy players can interrupt the extraction process and even convert it to their team by interacting with the device. Once enough time is accumulated, the team earns one point and a new neutral site appears on the map. There will be two variations of extraction as well. There is arena extraction, which is the core extraction experience with one neutral extraction site appearing at a time until one team scores enough points to win. There will also be ranked extraction, which is a variation, obviously. But the differences are that players will spawn with one frag grenade instead of two, motion tracker is disabled, and friendly fire is enabled. Interesting bit of information about extraction that it was actually meant to be a flood inspired mode. Former 343 employee Zach Boyce said that early vision they had for the mode were to have flood incursions where the teams and players would have to play a bit of whack-a-mole. Though he did say it didn't make a ton of sense, as in why are teams competing to do this? And this actually does line up with a lot of leaks that we've been seeing over the past year, which we've covered here on the channel. There are even Jeff Steitzer voice lines talking about new Flood Spork inbound. Though, due to time and resource limitations, they decided to go with just regular extraction from Halo 4. Let's get into one of the most exciting parts about Season 5, and that is Firefight. Now, Firefight will not be there at launch of Season 5, but it will be coming in later, which we might have some speculation of when exactly. Though over the weekend at the HCS event in Seattle, 343 revealed some details as in you can choose your difficulty for matchmaking. Skulls are a bit randomized as well for different kinds of difficulty. The big thing, nine maps at launch, which three of those maps are going to be community made maps. And they did mention the big showcase map for this mode is going to be the House of Reckoning Rip straight from the campaign, now playable in multiplayer for Firefight. For those community made maps, let me put my speculation hat here on. In this recent blog here, they showcased new Forge features, but there were like campaign areas recreated within Halo Fitz Forge. But the thing is, though, like, yeah, this is the end of Halo 2, kind of standard stuff. But the interesting thing here, as we scroll down a little bit, we have the security zone recreated, which is just straight on out of firefight as well, which this definitely could work for that mode. We also have Alpha Sight right here recreated in Halo Infinite, which is one of the most popular firefight maps out there. Love this map in, as well. We also have Dimos, which I haven't had a chance to check out yet, but I mean, if you can put Forge firefight into the game, why not? While we're on the topic of Forge AI and the campaign style of experiences, Duquesne 23 got a response from the Forge Lord himself, and it was quite interesting, saying, is there a possibility of having a Forge campaign playlist matchmaking one day in Halo Infinite? And he said, anything is possible. We'll have to see what happens with Forge and AI, but I think it would be silly not to explore how those types of experiences would work within our playlists. Now that's what I like to hear. For example, here, Unbroken Onyx, who's a forger, has been spending time recreating classic campaign missions in Halo Infinite 
and having them be rather functional. Why would they not be able to do this for just regular matchmaking? Talking about maps, we have the official dev maps coming in with Season 5, two arena maps, one of Prism and the other one being Forbidden. In a blog here talking about the two maps, the developers were asked what are some unique features that Forbidden and Prism have as arena maps. On Prism, one of the power weapons is actually the special pinpoint needler variant from the Halo Infinite campaign. So that variant boasts an increased magazine and much stronger tracking abilities. And as we saw in the trailer, you can shoot these Blamite crystals, which will then explode and then track different enemies. When the developers were asked which modes are some of your favorites to play on this map, these are what the maps are tailored to be designed around, saying Prism feels great on zone control modes like King of the Hill and Extraction, but also plays really well as a fast-paced one-flag CTF game. And for Forbidden, they mentioned that CTF, Strongholds, and Audible play really well on it. A lot of the leaks and rumors around these two maps, especially for Forbidden, they were talking about maybe being a infantry only BTB map, even an 8v8 specific developer made map. No, this is a 4v4 map, but this gives me the impression that it's actually going to be a bit larger than your typical arena map. Now, I did get a chance to play this at HCS Seattle, and I would totally agree that this is a much larger map when it comes to arena style. There's not a whole lot of freedom of movement, as in it's very hallway based and specific pathways you can go around. Though there are enough of those pathways to move around freely, you don't feel like you're going through choke point after choke point. And with a map this large, you do kind of have to force players down during pathways to kind of speed up the action a little bit so there's not so many possibilities of getting ink shot. We're talking about more maps coming into Halo Infinite, we have an entire Halo 3 refueled playlist coming in mid-season for the combined arms operation, which will get more details of what operations are. This is a weird situation where like it's a Mountain Dew sponsored playlist in a way, where basically you brought back the maps of Guardian, Construct, Blackout, The Pit, High Ground, Isolation, and Narrows, along with a brand new map, Critical Dew Point, which is slightly inspired off of the vanilla Halo 3 Forge map, Foundry. Now the maps of Guardian, Construct, Blackout, and Narrows are reimagination, so I wouldn't expect a one-to-one -one recreation, but we do have a, the Pit, High Ground, and Isolation labeled as remakes, so I wouldn't expect to be seeing much variation with those. We all know how popular Halo 3's remake play playlist was back in Halo 5, so I'm so glad to see it come back in Halo Infinite. Halo 3 is my favorite Halo, and I'm so excited to see these maps come back into the game to get a chance to play them. One of the aspects of Halo Infinite's game, the biggest buff of all time when it comes to Season 5 is Forge. Now, I'm sure many of you who watch don't really Forge a whole lot, but this is huge for Forge creators, which then in turn, as a casual player, get to play all this really cool stuff that these amazing Forgers can create. As we talked about previously, the AI toolkit is coming in. We also have two new canvases that we mentioned earlier, but also on top of that, 200 plus new objects coming in the game, object collision toggle, lighting improvements, and additional quality of life improvements, and so much more. At a high level, this is what's going to be offered for Forgers here, which then the players will be able to enjoy, which one is going to be 43 variants of characters AI being put into this. The way you can have the AI spawn is either just spawning on the map as a drop pod or on a phantom. You can determine what weapons the AI will spawn with. You can guide their movement choose their difficulty, modify their behaviors, scripting logic, and allegiances as in saying they can fight with you or against you. Within those 43 types of campaign AI, you'll have grunts, jackals, skirmishers, elites, brutes, hunters, marines, and bosses, but then all of those having their own variations. For allegiances, you can have up to eight different team allegiances. The campaign AI can be told to work with you, against you, even alongside an enemy team of real people working against you. The two new campuses of Barrage and Permafrost will bring a quite welcome addition. Out of those 200 new objects coming in, 100 of those are going to be banished theme, which is going to be amazing for us to have some new visuals to play with when it comes to Forge, and also 100 new winter objects. Some of those being variations of what's already in the game, but just kind of like a winter version of them. So if you have a snow covered map, you can't have green grass next to snow. Doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. There are going to be two new bits of sandbox items being added in throughout season five. At the beginning of season five, we'll have the Bandit Evo rifle. This weapon is specifically designed for ranked, but it will be in social modes as well. And this Bandit Evo is going to replace the battle rifle for ranked play as a starting weapon. So what's different with the Bandit Evo compared to the regular Bandit Rifle? Well, I'm glad you didn't ask because I have the details for you right here. One is that the Bandit Evo will feature a 1.6x zoom, so you actually have like a typical zoom feature like you have with the Battle Rifle. 
but they also drastically reduce the bloom and recoil with this. So it'll also have a similar time to kill as the battle rifle. And they've also decreased the fire rate just a little bit to kind of keep it in line. So then it just doesn't completely throw off the balancing when it comes to the sandbox. And it also does feature D-scope. So that rate of fire change just goes from 3 to 2.9 rounds per second. So a very slight change, but those changes make a big difference when it comes to a competitive style of game. They also increased the initial ammo count from 45 to 60. The total amount of rounds you can have at maximum went from 60 to 75 for the Evo. They eliminated the progressive recoil with it. So you can shoot it as fast as you want and it resets back to where it originally was. Unlike with the regular Bandit, it'll just continue kicking up. They reduced the bloom and air angles with it. Again, we mentioned before with the 1.4 times iron sight zoom, they replaced it now with a 1.6 hollow point sight. So then you can actually get descoped. And they also changed the reticle art to make it more in line with the classic DMR. Though both bandits got a buff. The red reticle range has been increased for both bandit evo and the regular bandit rifle as well. Now this is going to be a massive change for the red reticle range improvements. We'll see how much it actually affects the guns. Did upload a video on my channel a while ago when the bandit first came in comparing it to the battle rifle. So we'll see where the red reticle range is sitting. I'll definitely do tests with the evo bandits so you guys get some more info about the game. So subscribe so you catch that video. And when it comes to the customization side of things for the bandit rifle, it says that it, all the bandit customizations will work for both the Evo and regular Bandit rifles. The Ranked will have Extraction as a Ranked mode, which is going to be really fun to try around with. And they'll be on three maps of Live Fire, Recharge, and Streets. The good ones. Britain is also going to be thrown into the mix as a Ranked map as well, but it'll be just for Capture the Flag, and it'll take three caps to win a match. The other new addition coming in with Season 5 later on is going to be the Repair Field piece of equipment, which is going to be very similar to the Regen Field that we had back in Halo 4, but it's me a little different as you can actually repair players as well as vehicles. And you can actually stick this repair field onto vehicles themselves. So they can, they can repair while taking damage at the same time. I'm sure we'll have to see how that plays out because I'm sure some very creative players in BTB can find some unique ways to just dominate with vehicles. So we'll have to see what happens. Now this next section will get you guys excited, but might actually make some of you guys a little upset, but it's gonna be the customization coming in with season five. It's gonna be greatly increased, but also might press a few buttons. As I covered in a previous video, there will be flood customization, of course, with cross core helmets. You can have that with whatever kind of set you would like. There's gonna be a mix though of things you can earn within the battle pass, as well as things that are gonna be available within the shop. And 343 goes over that in this blog. This is gonna be the full 50 tier battle pass available. If you guys wanna see everything in here, just pause the video. But the great thing about this battle pass is that there are gonna be zero duplicates. For example, if you see this lower icon with the two pentagon shapes connected to get together, that means it's going to be a cross core item. So you unlock this, it's going to be for all the weapons. You unlock this, it's going to be for all the helmets. You unlock this one, it's going to be available for all your cores. And things like shoulder pads, knee pads, and duplicate items are going to be part of one tier. So you can see here for tier 25, the same shoulder pads are going to be available for you to unlock just once. A lot of the flood items coming in later in the battle pass towards the last 10 levels. So you might think, well, you're only getting 50 tiers for the battle pass, we're getting less content. Not actually, because I counted up with season four's battle pass and we had 57 duplicated tiers. So actually we're getting more content for less grind, actually. A big change to the live service when it comes to Halo Fair are gonna be operations, gonna be replacing events within this game. As stated, operations are gonna to be totally free activities that will include 20 tiers of earnable themed items and operations will run for approximately four to six weeks but unlike events the way you progress on operation will be based on match xp not challenges the first event here is going to be combined arms coming in in on November 14th through December 19th. Combined Arms is when we will see the Halo 3 refueled playlist come in, which I'm definitely gonna be excited about playing. And we'll have Winter Contingency 3 coming in December 19th through January 30th. Now these operations will feature 20 tiers, all free for you to unlock, but there will be a paid element with it. If you wanna drop 500 credits, you will get the exclusive item that comes with that pass as well. And if you buy into the operation pass, that doesn't expire, it stays with you throughout the entirety of Halo. But if you just play for free and don't complete your 20 tiers, that pass actually does go away. Now, I'm sure many of you know that we'll get the Halo Infinite Master Chief now for completing Hero as an, a max XP rank within Halo Infinite. 
when you do hit max rank, you do get the Halo Infinite Mark 6 kit for your Mark 7 armor core, the Hero Emblem set, Campaign Season armor coating for all armor cores, and the Midway Emerald armor coating for all cores. The announcement here is that the CE Mark 5 armor kit is coming to Halo Infinite as well, but so you might not be happy how. As you can find it in the shop on November 7th, just before Halo CE's birthday. Now I do wish you could just earn this armor core or armor kit just by playing the game. I wish I was true, but I mean, if you do buy into the battle pass, you do get the 1000 credits back through playing to the past. So maybe you could use those credits to get this CE armor. I do wish there's something you could earn as it's going to be highly desirable. While we're on the topic of armor kits, a big update has come to those where you can now customize the coating, the visor, emblem, and also effects on it. As we covered in a previous video, cross core helmets are now available across, well, all your cores, which is fantastic. The helmet is such a major piece when it comes to the customization of your character that this is going to be a great addition to see what kind of cool customization is going to be available. The weekly ultimate rewards are getting a major change as well. As you probably know right now, it all kind of works on an individual basis. Like when you get a new coating, it's just for a specific weapon. Not the case anymore. If you unlock an emblem, that'll be available for armor, vehicles, and weapons. If you unlock an armor coating, that's going to be available for all cores. And as you could assume, a coating for your weapon, that will be applied to all the weapons within the game. 